Hi guys, it's Olivia here from Olivia's Catastrophe and today I'm here to give you a bit of book discussion and a book review of the book Shiver by Maggie Stiefvater. Um, I'm just going to keep this one spoiler free, there's going to be no spoilers whatsoever so whether you've read this book or you haven't read this book you're allowed to listen to the discussion and you'll be able to still enjoy watching this review. Before I get started there's a couple of things I'd like to say. First of all, if you see that there's runes Shadow Hunter runes going down my arm. Don't worry about it, I didn't get a tattoo. I was just doing some photographs for my Instagram, which is basically a bookstagram, and I took some Shadow Hunter pictures. I'll leave a link to my Instagram below, you should definitely find me there. Lots of bookish photographs and other book related things. So, back to this book discussion. When I picked up the book Shiver, I honestly couldn't wait. I got it for a euro at a second-hand book fair, so I was very like happy with this bargain. And I've heard so many people read Maggie Stiefvater's books and just fall in love with them, especially with the Shiver series. I don't know if it's called the Shiver series. Oh, especially with the Mercy Falls series. So I couldn't wait to start reading. Everybody loves these books, and as well as that, this is a werewolf book, so there's werewolves in this book and it's kind of a different kind of werewolf because these werewolves don't change at night or change with the moon, but they change with the temperature. When they're too cold, they change into a wolf and when they're warmer, they are in a human form. But there's some like things that go with it that make it a bit difficult. But as well as that, I was going to be buddy, buddy reading this one with a bookstagrammer called Fiza Bookaholic. I'll leave a link to her Instagram below. She takes amazing photographs. I was ready to start buddy reading, started reading. The book left me on the borderline of a potential reading slump and I considered DNFing it many, many times. And DNFing basically means marking it as I did not finish, putting it down and moving on to my next book. So when I got into this one, it wasn't really what I was expecting. I was expecting werewolves, but you know how the wolves um, transform depending on the weather and the temperature. I thought it was going to be called Shiver because it gives you like scary shivers, like these kind of scary shivers. <sighs> scary stuff. But sadly, that's not really what this book is about, so I was kind of a bit disappointed in that aspect. And as well as that, there's just so many things that went wrong with this book. So where did it begin to go wrong? Let's begin with Grace's parents. Now I know in young adult we want the teenagers to seem independent, so it's usually a common trope that the parents are either absent for a lot of the novel, or they're there and they're like, asking questions but the teenagers always like managing to get their way out of sticky situations involving their parents or whatever all the parents are there when the parents are there in a novel i actually really like it but of course there's always like keep the parents in the dark kind of thing when it comes to young adults this one just took it way too far it bothered me so much grace's parents are basically never there she cooks herself she makes her own dinner her parents go out at night they party they go to different cities they come home late 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 at night they're ignorant they don't know anything about grace they don't understand her apparently and they just basically leave grace to do her own thing grace is basically living her own life with her parents there in the background stumbling in stumbling out conveniently never there in time to see too much of the werewolf paranormal stuff happening no it's all way too convenient and the parents are just never there just don't even think about doing that the second thing that bothered me was grace herself don't even get me started on this character she's not a bad person she's she's nice enough but the problem with Grace is that at the beginning of the novel she's totally like she's just turned 15 or maybe she just turned 16. She's insecure, she's quiet, she doesn't want to have anything to do with boys, she's so shy and like she's totally different. And then she meets Sam and bam she does a complete 360. Suddenly she's flirty, she's attractive, she's confident, she's all these things that she wasn't before and that doesn't make any sense because yes I know if you like if you start fancying someone and you start dating someone aspects about you change but trust me you usually change like 90 degrees like small changes. Grace's character completely changed. It was like a revolution and I just found it was just too unrealistic, too far of a change for me to basically grasp her character all of a sudden i didn't know this character that i was reading about anymore and that really bothered me and as well as that grace is just someone who takes the existence of werewolves when she discovers that they are real far too well 
Yes, she's always had an obsession with werewolves and all that sort of thing, and yes, in all paranormal books you get the point where the character who doesn't know the paranormal stuff is real suddenly realises it's real, and they have some shock moments, and they all kind of understand it a bit quickly because, you know, gotta move on with the novel, but this, it was just way too quick. She was just totally on board with the idea of werewolves, and it was just way too fast for me. Then we get into the love interest, Sam. <sighs> I liked Sam, Sam was a nice character, but there were also problems with his character as well. He was nice and he thinks in song lyrics because he really likes music, but the idea of the song lyrics was just to tell us stuff that we already knew, and as well as that, it was just, it never added to the story itself, the whole song lyrics, music playing side of things, it just never added to the story and I just felt like it was so pointless having it in there if it didn't add anything to the story. When it comes to the plot, I really felt like this book didn't really have that much plot. It was kind of slow, it was kind of, yeah, nothing was really happening. They had some small issues, but the issues were either one, things that they couldn't do anything about, or two, easily solved, and the solution was always just there, and then even when the obstacles were coming at them, they were coming so slowly. It felt like I had to wait a millennia before they arrived. <laughs> Even then, with the slow plot, this is heavily a romance. It's kind of like Twilight in terms of plot and romance, although I love Twilight a whole lot more. Story for another day. But I just felt like, okay, I can just look forward to the romance. But the thing about Sam is, even though I love a good gentleman when it comes to romance, he was just gentleman to the max. He basically didn't even want to touch Grace if, okay, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but he was just so careful about being a gentleman with Grace that it kept the romance really boring, really damp, and I wasn't feeling it at all, to be frank. I've totally ranted about this, let's give it some redeeming qualities. Why you might like this book even though I didn't. I know I just ranted a whole lot about Sam, but I did like Sam's character. He was a nice kind of guy, and if I had to choose a favourite character in the book, I would definitely choose Sam. And another redeeming quality of this book was that the writing style was just so good. The descriptions were beautiful, and I just could just tell the writing style was done so well. It just made me so sad that the writing style was being wasted on such a boring story and such uninteresting characters with annoying tropes chucked into the mix. That's what made me so sad, which is why I'm trying to think, should I read a different Maggie Stivata book that is in a different series or whatnot, and then I'll be able to enjoy her writing style with a better story and better characters, or should I just not bother because all her books are like that? Please tell me in the comment section below if I should try another Maggie Stivata book, if I should push on and read the sequel, which I do have, but I only got it for a euro. So should I read the sequel to this one? Should I try another Maggie Stivata book? Or should I just scratch it all together and move on with my life to some books I might enjoy more? Please tell me in the comment section below and also tell me, do you have an unpopular opinion on a book that a lot of people like? Like, comment, subscribe and share if you enjoyed this video. It'd be a big support to my channel and I will of course love you eternally. I'll be back next week with another video. Until then, goodbye. Basically, I was on the borderline of a... Why does that always go off?